everybody yeah. sore from home. Sure. Sure. This yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't go. But I heard it was a great time. Had my uh, life.
Troubles and times are yes, here. that's right. Number one sixty four.
about 2.30 Saturday afternoon, Greg and Felicia's going to get married up at the house in the carport, and everybody's invited to come and be with them. They uh, Just all you got to do is just go up that little winding road and up to the house there in the park. We'll find a place to park. Uh, Woody said he had 33 acres out there, so we can find a place to park there by somewhere. Uh, Woody, Woody's, it, it, he's close enough to walk if we have to park over there, so it'd be all right. To We're finding plenty of places to park, so everybody's invited. Anybody wants to come up and enjoy that time. And then Saturday afternoon at 6 o'clock, Chosen Generation's going to be here. Uh, all of you probably remember Chosen Generation from being here before. Uh, they're a great blessing. Uh, uh, what, a, what a blessing it was to be here with them before, and, and I know it's going to be again. Look forward to that. Chosen Saturday, Saturday night at 6 o'clock. Saturday night at 6 o'clock. It's not going to happen. Usually, happen on Friday night. not going to have it. They couldn't get away on Friday night. They could only come on Saturday night, so they were going to have it on Saturday night so that they'll be here. Chosen Generation from Grand Fort Payne. Uh, they're, they're a great group of guys that are really a blessing and really enjoyed having them here before. I know it'll be a blessing this time, too. I look forward to that. And let's see, what else? Uh, oh, these are. Uh, and on the Christmas party, we're going to have a, a happy birthday Jesus party on December the 16th. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> not going to cook up, not going to cook up, cook up a bunch of stuff. <laughs> we're just going to have a happy birthday party. We're going to have a birthday party for Jesus Amen. on December the 16th. Uh, we'll be there about 4 30 in the afternoon and, and look forward to that. I know that'll be a lot of fun. We, We've done that last year. We did that last year, and it was a lot of fun. We enjoyed doing it, and I know we'll enjoy doing it again. Look forward to that. Invite everybody to come and be with us. Have a good time. How I always have a good time getting together. It's always, listen, it's always a blessing to get together with God's people. You know what? You can fellowship with those out there in the world, and you're not going to get a blessing from it. You're going to probably maybe get a cursing from it. But you can, and you can know that when you gather together with God's people and fellowship together, with God's people, you're going to get a blessing from doing Amen. that. So, in, in, I can't talk this morning. I invite everybody to see you come and, and be with us during that time. And I reckon that's everything, unless I forgot something, which is highly likely. <laughs> Stand with me, up all for that quick. <laughs>
I believe the Lord calls people all the time and they're not listening. I believe the Lord calls people all the time and even though they hear, they're not listening. Even though they hear, they're not going to be obedient. Even though they hear, they're not going to do what God's calling them to do. I'm afraid we see that a lot of places today. God calls people to many things. He calls people to many works. But you know what? They'll sit back and watch the day go by and not answer what the call of God is on their life. In these verses here, it talks about being called. Listen, in uh, chapter 2, verse 21. I'm just going to read a, a, a couple of verses here and look at some other things. But in chapter 2, verse 21, it says, For even hereunto, listen to what that says, even hereunto were you called, because Christ also suffered for us, having us an example that we should follow his steps, who did no sin, neither was God found in his mouth. Amen. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously. Being called, I thought about what it means to be called. That's the same word. Being called is the same word as being chosen. Being chosen of God. You know what? We're a chosen people. Guess what? Christians are a chosen people. God chose every single one of us. You know what? We wasn't looking for him. Right. I don't know about anybody else, Brother Stephen. I, that's the last thing in the world that I was looking for. I wasn't looking right. for Jesus Christ. Right. Jesus Christ was looking that's for me. Right. He chose me out from a world, a, a, a world of sin. He chose me out from a place where I ought not to have been. He chose me out to a place where I'm going to go. I'm glad to be chosen this morning. I'm a chosen child of the King this morning. If you're here this morning and you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, you're a chosen child of God. You didn't choose Him. He chose, he chose you. You know, we get it backwards. We get it backwards. We say we accepted the Lord as our Savior. That's backwards. We didn't accept Him. He accepted us into the family of God. He was already accepted. God the Father accepted him from the very beginning. But we weren't accepted until he accepted us into the family of God. I'm glad to know this morning. He chose us. Each one of us. We we're chosen. And listen, over in over in verse 9, back up over in verse 9, it says, But you are a chosen generation. I thought about what it's like to be chosen. You know, when you were kids, when you was kids and you went out on the playground. Whoever was the captain of the team, he chose, they chose sides. This is, this is over here. He was chosen over here because he was a, a little bit bigger than the rest of them. He was chosen because he could hit the baseball a little bit harder than the others. He was chosen because he could, uh, was a little taller and he could shoot the basketball. You know, each one of them was chosen for something that they could see. He was chosen because he was a little bit stouter, a little bit more muscular, a little bit bigger. That's why they chose, that's why the captain of the team chose him to be on that side. Well, you know what? I'm glad, John, that God didn't choose according to the way we look. God didn't choose according to how good we was. He didn't choose according to how strong we were. God chose according to our weakness. That's right. That's right. That's right. God chose according to our weakness. That's right. We were in a place where we had no hope. We were without hope. We were at the bottom of the list. We were at the bottom of the barrel. But God chose, God chose, not because we were good, not because we could do something, not because we were able because we were at the bottom of the barrel. God chose to reach down there where we were at, Charles. That's he right. reached all the way down yeah. where we were at and got right. us out of that place. I'm glad to know this morning that we're chosen. We're a chosen people. That's right. Not because we're worthy, not because we're good enough, but because God loved us so much that he was willing to choose us out of that place where we were at. Now, I thought about that choosing. I thought, you know, when they were chosen, when them kids chose another kid, to come on the team. You know what? It was so they could produce something or so they could put out something. It wasn't so they could be blessed. When God chose us, when he chose us to be on his side, he chose us in order that he might bless us. Amen. They were chosen for what they could do. Yeah. We were chosen because of what he could do for Amen. us. We were chosen because he loved us so much that he was willing to die on a cross. He was willing to suffer 
and bleed and die on that old rugged cross in order that we could be part of his family. Isn't it a blessing this morning to know that you're part of the family of God, that he Amen. chose you out of that place where you was at. He chose you because even though you were unworthy, even though you were weak and of no benefit, even though you had no hope, he chose us out of that place, Mike, and set us on, oh, he set us on the road to glory. I'm glad to know this morning, praise God, we're headed to glory because we're chosen of God. He chose us out of that place. And listen, it goes on to say, you're a royal priesthood. Yeah. Now some of them said he's talking to Israel, but I want to tell you something. When, when the nation of Israel turned their back on Jesus Christ, he came to the Gentiles. That's us. Now we're a chosen generation. Now we belong to that group. Now we are God's people. We are God's chosen people. I'm glad to know this morning. Listen, he said, you're a royal priesthood. You know what? We're each one, the priest of our family. Mike, you're the priest in your home this morning. The priest had the awesome privilege of going to the, uh, acts, having access to Almighty God. That's what the priest, that was what his, his job was. That was his privilege. He was privileged to go before Almighty God. Listen, he's made us priests. When the veil was rent, we had access to God. We could go to Him. Now we're a royal priesthood. We're all priests of our family. I want to tell you this morning, if you're not serving as a priest of your family, you're missing out on what God called you to do. Right. You're chosen. You're chosen to be the priest of your family. I guess I'm talking to men. Men, you need to step up right. and be the priest of your family. Be the leader. And take the access that's uh, given to you. Use the ability that's given to you to go in the presence of Almighty God on behalf of those of your family. That's what the priest did. He went to, the, went to God on behalf of all the nation of Israel. He went to God on behalf of the worst, vilest sinner that there was. He was able to go to God's go in God's presence and on behalf of that person. Listen, we're able to go to God on behalf of every one of our family. We're able to go to God on behalf of those out of our family that are lost. And we've all got them. I guarantee you, nobody here this morning that don't know somebody or got somebody in their family that's lost and undone without God. It's you. Oh, listen, it's not only your privilege, but it's your responsibility to go to God. You're chosen. You're chosen not because of what you are or what you can do, but, but because God wants to bless us. That's what we're chosen for. We're chosen for God's blessing. We're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Our main privilege was to go in the, is to go in the presence of God. When the veil was rent, when Jesus Christ was crucified and the veil was rent, we was given access to Almighty God. Through the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. I'm glad to know, praise God. We are a royal priesthood. Over to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 12, says, In whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of Him. With whom we have boldness and access. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16 says, Come boldly before the throne of grace. You know what? God wants us to accept that position as the priest of our family. God wants us to accept that, re that responsibility to go before him on behalf of those that are lost and undone without him. God wants us to use that privilege that he's given us to go before him. Come boldly before the throne that you might obtain mercy and find help in time of need. Right. You know what? God's there for us. He's waiting for us to, he waits for us to come to him. <coughs> He says, he says, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation. And holy nation. You know, people will turn their, I guess, turn their nose up or turn their head away or something when you talk about being holy. I want to tell you this morning, if you're not holy, you won't ever see God. The Bible says without holiness, no man will see the Lord. Holy means to be separated. It means to be set apart. It means to be different. It means that what the Corinthians where it talks about being a new creature. That's what being holy is. That's being that new creature. Wherefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. 
Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. That's that holiness that the Bible is talking about. It's being set aside. It's being separated. It's being different than the rest of the world out there. I want to tell you, people can look on your lifestyle and can't tell that you're separated from the world. There's a problem that you don't have that holiness. You better have that. We better. I better have that holiness. If I don't have that holiness, the Bible says I won't see the Lord. That's, right. That's the word of God. That's not what I said. Without holiness, no man will see the Lord. What the Bible says, we better have that holiness. And that holiness means that we're separated from the world, separated from the flesh, the desires of the flesh, separated from sin and from the things of the world. You know what? Uh, the Bible says, love not the world or the things that are in the world. Don't get caught up in what goes on out there in the world today. Don't get caught up in that uh, island worship. Don't get caught up in thinking that your big house and your big bank account and your big car and all them things. You don't get caught up in worshiping them things because they're all going to go up and smoke. Peter talks about it right here in these verses. They're all going to burn up. They're not going to be here anymore. They're going to be gone. A chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. He said, be ye holy as I am holy. First John chapter one, we somebody we <coughs> we read it in Sunday school this morning. First John chapter one, starting there about verse five, says this sin is the message that we declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we walk in darkness and say we have fellowship with him, we lie, and the truth's not in us. But if we walk in the light as he's in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all unrighteousness. You know what? He is light. There's no darkness in him. We have to be separated in order for us to be a holy nation. We have to be separated from the darkness of this old world. Listen, we live in a dark and ugly world. It, we may not want to admit it. We may not think it's that bad. But I want to tell you, over in, the, uh, over in 1 John chapter 3, I believe it starts off. It says, but uh, in the last days, perilous times are coming. Well, you know what? Those last days are here. And those perilous times are here. We live in a dark, dreary world. When men don't know whether or not they're a man. When women don't know whether or not they're a woman. Whenever children are taught that they can be either gender that they want to be, that's not what the Word of God says. That's yeah. darkness. That's right, right. That's right. darkness. Right. Nothing else. You can't call it anything else. Nope. It's darkness. Yeah. It's totally opposite to what the light of the Lord Jesus Christ said. Amen. Totally opposite. <laughs> Hope Matthew, he said he made a male and female. Yeah. Didn't make anything in between it. Doesn't make provision for anything in between. There's only two genders. Right. They, the school wants to teach it. If the school wants to teach your children yes. anything other than that, they're dealing in darkness. Amen. They're dealing in darkness. He says we're a, a, a holy nation. <coughs> Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14 says, Follow peace with all men. And holiness without peace. Without holiness, we will not ever see the Lord. It says, he goes on to say, a holy nation, a peculiar people. A peculiar people. Well, you know, we used to think that was a derogatory term to be called peculiar. Yeah. We used to think there was something wrong with somebody. They, they call them peculiar because they was different. Because there was something wrong with them. But you know what? It's a blessing to be peculiar. Right. I'm, glad to, I'm glad to say today we're peculiar people. We're not like the rest of the world. We're different than the rest of the world. The rest of the world may be turned upside down and the rest of the world may be living in darkness, but the children of God are living in the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God, I'm glad to know this morning. I'm glad to know this morning that we are children of light and not of darkness. We are a peculiar people. We're different than the rest of the world. Peculiar don't mean to be odd. We may seem odd to them. I'm sure, I'm sure if you went downtown this morning, down there on the, what is that thing down there on the corner of, uh, what's the name of it? Uh, uh, Steve Reno. If you went down to Steve Reno's this morning, and you went in there and you talked to somebody in there about them people up there at church, that's, 
hollering and, and spitting and screaming and carrying on. Uh, listen, they'd be odd balls. There's something wrong with them people. Well, they are something wrong with this person. This person's peculiar. This person's different than the rest of the world. Praise God. I want to tell you, we're called. There we go again. Back out to the back of that word called and that word chosen. We're called to be a peculiar people. We're called to be holy. We're called to be a royal priesthood. We're called to be priests. And we're called to be particular. We're called to be different. We ought not to be like the rest of the world out there. We ought to be so far from the rest of the world out there that they can see you coming down the street and know that there's something different about you. They, 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 listen, if they can't look at me coming down the street and know that there's something, if they can't talk to me for a minute and know there's something different, I've got a problem. Right. I've got a problem. I need a checkup. I'm peculiar. I'm different. And I'm going to stay different. Praise God. God will let us stay different. We're a peculiar people. Listen, transformed. Transformed. Changed. Not that same old person anymore, a different person. Been right. transformed. Kids have these toys they call transformers. They look like a car until you pick them up and pull all the uh, corners out and all that stuff. And then they're transformed into a person. You know what? We're transformed. We was part of the world. We was on a, we was on a road to the devil's hell. But we've been transformed. We've been changed. We've been turned around. Listen, we've been we have a renewed mind. Amen. We have a renewed mind. I don't have that same mind that I used to have. Right. My mind used to be focused on the world. Yeah. My mind's not focused on the world anymore. I've got a new focus. I'm focused on Jesus Christ. I'm focused on heaven. I'm focused on living in the presence of Almighty God. Listen, that city of gold. I'm focused on going to that city of gold. I'm focused on seeing those sights of heaven. We can only dream about them, Stephen. We can only think about them. Our little finite minds cannot even imagine. The Bible says, eyes not seen or ear heard, neither did it into the heart of man. The things that God has in store for those of us. You know what that tells me? That tells me that our little old finite minds cannot even start to understand what heaven's going to be like. Right. I don't know about you, but I'm transformed and I'm ready to go. Yeah. I'm ready to see what it looks like. Listen, nobody wants to die. I believe God puts in us a desire to live. I believe He puts that in every man. He puts in a desire to live. I want to tell you this morning, when the time comes, be ready to see what we're going to do. Be ready to see the sights of the Lord. Be ready for a glad reunion day. Be ready for the streets of gold. Be ready for the mansion on the, on, over on the hilltop. But we're going to have those things. Those things are already promised. They're already set aside. A peculiar people that we should show forth the praises of of him that called us out of darkness into his marvelous Amen. light. Yeah. You know what? That's our job now. We get a new job. We get a, we're transformed. We've got a new profession. We're new people and we're, uh, with a new job. Our job is to show forth the praises of him that called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. That's what he said right there. That's what he said right there in those verses. Which in time past were not a people. In time past, we're not a people. Listen to what it says. But are now the people of God. What a blessing. Called to be children of God. What a blessing. Called to be peculiar. Called to be holy. Called to serve God every day. That's what we're called to do. We're chosen. We're put on God's side. God chose us each one. He chose us to walk with him. He chose us to serve him. And he chose us to spend eternity with him in glory. That ought to be, a, that ought to be enough for us to sing praises about. Right. That ought to be enough to praise him about is what he's done for us. Right. How he's called us out of that place right. who were not a people and made us to be a people. We're now a people not because we're good, not because we changed ourselves, but because of what God has done for us. 
He's transformed us. He's changed us into a different people. Listen, we're purchased. We belong to God. He paid for us. Over in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18, I believe it is, it says, For you're not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received from your fathers, but with the precious blood Amen. of Jesus Christ. The precious blood of Jesus Christ. Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I live, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Jesus Christ who gave, who loved me and gave himself for me to redeem me. You know what? I'm redeemed. Yes. I'm all paid for. All the angels mm. can't even say that. That's right. Amen. Not even, that, not even, they can't even say that. Call, for, call to show forth the praises of God. <coughs> Him who had called us out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy when you were lost and undone. Without Jesus Christ, you had not obtained mercy. But when you became a child of God, mercy was given. Mercy was shown to us. Mercy was given to us. Because without God's mercy, there wouldn't be any salvation. Without God's mercy, there wouldn't be any hope. wouldn't be any glory. There wouldn't be any home and glory. Without God's mercy, it's because He's merciful and gracious. The uh, Bible says in uh, Ephesians 2 8, I believe it is, it says, For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are His workmanship. Created unto good works in Christ Jesus. Right. You know what? God called us out of this old world. And he called us into the family of God. And he called us to sing praises to him. He called us up to worship him. He called us up to work for him. He called us up to be the children of God. I'm glad to know transformed. I'm glad to know we've changed. No longer that same old man that we used to be. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 23 says being born again. Being born again. Not of corruptible seed but of an incorruptible by the word of God which liveth and abideth forever. By the word of God which liveth and abideth forever. Called up. And listen he says the people of God. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1. Seed. We're passed about by so great a cloud of witness. Let us lay aside every sin and the weight, every weight of the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that's set before us. We're called, yes. called up to run the race for Almighty God this morning. Listen, I want to ask you this morning are you called? Are you a people of God? Are you the people of God this morning? Are we the people of God? Yes. We're the people of God. I'm going to tell you this morning. If you're here this morning and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, and then God had not He's called you, but you had not listened. Right. There's not anybody that God had not called. It said it's not God's will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Right. God calls every one of them. But you know what? They don't all listen. Right. And they don't all act on that call. You know what? If God calls you to do something today, it doesn't make any difference what it is. If God calls you to be a witness to somebody, if God calls you to be a Sunday school teacher, if God calls you to be a preacher, if God calls you, you better not turn a deaf ear. Because if you do, then you can't claim, you can't claim, make this claim, we're the people of God. We're not the people of God if we're not obedient people of God, the children of God are obedient to the word of God. Yeah. They're obedient to the Holy Spirit. They're transformed. They're changed. They're different. They're peculiar. They're holy. They're royal priesthood. A holy nation. The people of God are different. Are we people of God? Listen, he goes on to say, which in time, uh, uh, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims abstain from fleshly lust, which war against us. You know what? We're called to all those things, but we're called to abstain from fleshly lust. The Bible says abstain 
from all appearance of evil. That, you know what? That's a big order. That's a big order. Abstaining from all appearance of evil. You know what? What we look on sometimes and think it might be okay, it might be the appearance of evil. We're to abstain from the appearance of evil. Anything that when we have to listen, when we have to ask, you know, when, when we were kids, Steve, we had to ask, is it okay if I do this? Is it okay if I go here? Is it okay if I go <coughs> somewhere with somebody? Is it okay? If we have to ask if it's okay for us to do whatever it is we're doing, guess what? It's not okay. Right? Right. It's not okay. Abstain from all appearance of evil. If we don't know that we know that we know that it's okay, then it's not okay. We don't know that it's all right with God, then it's not okay. It's not okay. And, and, and some things that might be okay for you may not be okay for me. Some things that's okay for one may not be okay for another one. It may be different. Stand this morning. Brother Barry, we'll come to the verse of song this morning. If you've been here this morning and God's calling you for anything, if you're here this morning, listen, being called is being chosen.